It's good to have all of you here this morning for our second Sunday of Advent. And along with our second Sunday of Advent, we are having this year our Lessons and Carols this particular Sunday. So I'm delighted you can all be here to be a part of something very special in our time of worship together. Uh, a lot of things are going on, and I think I'm going to try to cover them here for us uh, so we don't miss anything. Um, Today, after worship, is our Advent workshop. For those of you who signed up for that, we're just going to uh, go into the fellowship hall right after worship and start with uh, the light lunch and, and get raring to go. So I'm glad so many people signed up to be a, to be a part of that. And thank you so much for, uh, uh, to Stacy and Holly and everybody who's your little elves that are making this happen. It's wonderful. So thank you for all the work you're putting into that. Speaking of all the work, we have all of our decorations up here, I think, at this point. And I want to thank uh, Linda, Shelley, and uh, uh, whoever has helped her. I have no idea whoever comes and helps her, but she's got to probably herself. But anyway, thank you, Linda, for getting all of this up and going. And uh, last week to Dave and Skip for bringing us that wonderful tree and so many of you have created ornaments to put on the tree if you didn't yet there's still some out there that you can take and and uh, either fill or color or both to your delight and uh, we'll put them up there on the tree we're going to add a lot more we've had our care center children working on them as well so uh, there's more to put on but uh, it looks it looks wonderful so thanks for helping make our advent season so meaningful and, and important so today is the last day for poinsettia orders. So if you have not done that yet, we need you to do that today. There is uh, order forms out there. We can talk to Linda about it, but uh, try to get that order in today. We would appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to send uh, Christmas cards without having to pay the full postage price, you can do it to people here uh, by using the Christmas card box out there, 25 cent stamps. Uh, this year, I think the proceeds are going to real life, if I remember correctly. Is that correct, Esther? Real life? Homes of Hope. That's right. Sorry. Homes of Hope. Uh, so if you'd like to send uh, Christmas cards to people within the church, uh, just use the box out there. Next to the box on our old refreshment table out there is uh, the offering envelopes for 2023. So if you have some envelopes out there for you, we advise you or ask you to please take them with you. That way we can avoid more postage costs than sending those off to you. So pick them up. And if you know somebody else uh, who's are sitting there uh, and can deliver them, that would be wonderful too. Dave, go ahead. Okay. Men's Brotherhood meeting Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock here. If you need a bulletin, we have bulletins this week. Don't get excited. We'll have them more. You need more? If you have, need a bulletin to follow along, raise your hand, and Esther, the lovely Vanna White Esther, will get them out to you. Okay, a couple other things also out in the narthex. Sign up for the cookie exchange. That's going to be happening on Sunday, December the 18th. You also can still bring in items for Bethany Children's Home. Uh, the items that they're looking for are on the back of our announcement sheet, which is out in the narthex. You've been doing a great job of getting those things in here. I believe those are due by December the 18th as well. Also, Ephraim Manor. Uh, gift cards are, are due as, as well. So you've been doing a great job of bringing things. We really appreciate that. Speaking of Bethany Children's Home, a little later in our service, we're going to have a mission moment. And we have Dana Hoffman from Bethany, who's going to be here to update us on how things are going at Bethany and remind us of our, of our partnership with them. Uh, now, a couple dates. Tomorrow's Golden Bells group rehearsal is canceled. So you're going to have your rehearsal next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. So no Golden Bells tomorrow, next Sunday morning at 9. We will be having a Christmas Eve service Saturday, December the 24th at 7 o'clock. So we hope you can all be here. In light of the fact that Christmas Eve is on Saturday night and Sunday morning is Christmas, we have made the decision to have our Christmas Day service or our Sunday morning service on Zoom only, knowing that many of you are going to be here Saturday night, 
Many of you who are Saturday night will probably not come Sunday morning. Many of you have other things getting ready for Sunday morning, and we thought it might be a different touch and a nice touch to just come together online like we did during COVID and uh, observe that Sunday morning in a, in a little more informal, abbreviated service together to start our Christmas day. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'll keep reminding you that as we get closer. And lastly, a few pastoral care concerns. I just invite you to continue to keep uh, Roland Gaiman in prayer. Uh, Sue Gerhardt is still at effort at the hospital, uh, recuperating and rehabbing from a broken hip. There is a hope for plan for her potentially to go home tomorrow. So keep Sue in your thoughts. Donnie Ernst is still at the Ephrata Hospital. They discovered he had a collapsed lung. They've kind of remedied that. It sounds like he's got a lot more relief. He will be there for a few more days for sure. And Esther asks us to keep her um, sister and brother-in-law, Bill and Ruth Beeler in prayer. Bill had a stroke this week. So uh, they just appreciate our prayers. Uh, join many others who will be praying for Bill and his recovery and for Ruth as she's uh, caring for him and going through this with him as well. So I thank you for being such a uh, prayerful congregation that people are asking us to pray for them as we do on a Sunday morning and hopefully you continue to do so uh, throughout the week as well. So we are here a special day of music and observance in another way, like last week when we had the, the skit here, the little reading, this week we have it all in music as a reminder of what this season is all about and what, what it is that we are presenting to the world out there about this season. So may you be rejuvenated in the good news today in all that you hear and are a part of as we come to worship the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we place ourselves before you now in all the beauty of this sanctuary, the beauty that is the decorations, that is the tree, but most importantly, that is the brothers and sisters gathered together next to us as we come in worship of you. May we lift our voices, our bells, ourselves before you this morning, and may you be glad in what rejoicing we bring to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let us indeed come. Come and worship the Lord. I invite you to rise and we're gonna to sing together, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful, hymn number 182, and it will be on the screen as well.
as we sing that well-known song and consider the words of it, we're going to light our second candle, and I invite Cindy to come forward. Last week, we, wrote, we lit the first candle, the candle of hope. Today, we light the second candle. We light the candle of peace. And as we do so, we hear these words from Isaiah, the prophet who we're looking at throughout this month, throughout this Advent season. In chapter 11, he says this, A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard, shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. We again see that picture of the animal kingdom erasing all their barriers of animosity and opposition and predatory nature, where they will be together, where we humans will be at peace. We long for that day, but in the meantime, we as the church, as the people who know Jesse's branch has come, we get to share the fruit of that branch as we begin to be people of peace. And we light that candle to remind ourselves that we are and long for more of that peace in Christ. Let's pray. We have come today, Lord, thankful for what we have, but hopeful for what is more to come. We look to the return, the coming of Christ again, as we seek to live out his coming in that manger. May we be people of peace, not just in word, but in action, as we let the Spirit of Christ lead us and his light shine in our darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join in our two verses of the end of the Advent candle song today, verses one and three. In the coming of Jesus Christ, we have peace. He instructs us to pass that to one another. So take a moment, turn to one another and share the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you all.
And now, O oh Lord, we add to our songs, we add to this peace, the offerings that we come to give to you as an expression of our thanks and gratitude, but also as a way for us to respond to you and to answer the call you placed on us to be that light, that beacon of hope and peace with the ministries we support and the ministry we share in this community and beyond. Bless these tithes and offerings for their purpose and their intentions, Lord, as we give it all to you in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to invite our children to come up and spend a little time up front here with me if they'd like to. Right there, it's good. That's good, right? You're gonna what? You're gonna go there? Okay. All right. Okay. So, how's everybody doing? It is nice to see you here with us this morning. Wonderful. You ready for Christmas? You're getting there, aren't you? We're ready for Christmas. We decorate. Did you see the nice tree we have over there? And now behind you, our our kind of shows you all the people that came around and then the shepherds and all those people that were there do you think that was a pretty peaceful night do you think it was quiet and calm you think so a lot you don't think so why not Oliver? yeah look at all the people and all the animals they can get pretty loud can't they right and you know what how about a baby? Have you ever been around a baby? You guys have been babies. You don't remember that. But have you been around a baby? Yeah. And, and are they quiet? No. No. Is quiet. So you have a quiet baby that you see. But babies can be loud because people can be loud, right? Okay, so she's not really loud. But they can be. So that, that scene there could have been a loud scene, but it also could have been a quiet scene. We sing that hymn at Christmas time, Silent Night. Do you know that one? Silent Night, Holy Night. It was probably at times a silent night, a peaceful night. And we sing, Oh, Holy Night. And there is an angel in there. In fact, the angel said, the angel, when the angel came, the angel brought a lot of angels along and they sang all this big song because Jesus was born. So it was pretty loud. It was pretty exciting. But you know what? Sometimes we just want things to be a little quiet and peaceful, don't we? Have your moms and dads ever said, I wish I could just have a little peace and quiet? You ever hear that one? Yeah, sure you have. We all like a little peace and quiet sometimes. And we certainly like things to be peaceful because fighting with each other, with brothers and sisters, and everybody. We want to be nice to each other, right? That's what Jesus wants. So we want things to be peaceful. God wants things to be peaceful. At times it can be loud because it's fun and it's celebration, but between people, he wants us to be nice, not fighting, not arguing, taking care of each other. And he sent Jesus to show us that, to remind us about that peace. So I know you guys are brother and sister. I know Lila has her cousin August, and I know you all have people maybe in school or daycare that you work with and spend time with. You want to be at peace with them. You want to be nice to them and let them be nice to you, okay? Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have sent us Jesus to show us that we are to be at peace with each other. We thank you that we have friends and family, brothers and sisters, or friends at school, whatever, that you've given us in our life. May we be at peace with them, honor them with love and kindness, and be reminded of your love and kindness toward us always. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. All right, you are going to go with Miss Dina this morning to learn a little bit more about Jesus and that peace. So follow her out that door. I forget, Jody, did you want to introduce Dana or are you? 
Come on up here. And Dana, you might as well just come right along with her. But thanks, Jody. Okay, I want to introduce, uh, I, I'm very pleased that she decided to step in for um, uh, Carolyn Strano, who had uh, been here last year, but Carolyn's going through surgery and re, uh, recovery on her hip, so um, she agreed to come from the Bethany home and talk. Um, I had to cheat here and look at my phone because she sent me an email explaining a little bit about her. She's a marketing and events specialist in the development department at Bethany Children's Home. She's worked at Bethany for about three and a half years, and she works very closely with Carolyn, who's the director of development on events, donor communications, marketing, and more. Um, they have something special coming up, and uh, I'll let her talk about that during her little speech. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, Julie. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me today. Um, as Jody said, my name is Dana Hoffman, and um, I am here from Bethany Children's Home in Wilmelsdorf. Um, Wilmelsdorf is kind of tucked away um, in the western part of the county, so not too many people get to kind of come by Bethany, so we always love to come out and, and talk with people to um, give you a little bit of information about us, um, a little bit of our history, and an update. Um, Bethany has been around since 1863. We started in Philadelphia with Reverend um, Emmanuel Beringer and his wife, Christiane, after seeing um, all of the homeless children um, that were a, a result of the Civil War, they realized that there was a need there to take care of children. So they decided to bring Caroline Engel, our first um, child, into their home, and she is the first child of Bethany Children's Home. Um, soon enough, the need was greater than the space could uh, provide. So they actually moved out to Bridesburg, PA, for a very short time before finally settling in Wommelsdorf. Um, at our current location. We are on more than 300 acres of land. Um, it's beautiful, it's right under um, South Mountain. Um, and we have children coming to us from different pathways uh, now than they used to. Um, now we have many children who come to us with severe trauma in their lives from uh, physical abuse, neglect, um, trafficking, um, sexual abuse things like that. And we bring them and we um, facilitate their healing um, by offering many programs and um, they actually live on campus. And to kind of give you uh, an idea of how um, the housing works, we actually have a bunch of cottages. Like I said, it's 300 acres. So we have cottages for the boys and cottages for the girls. And each of those cottages has its own program. Um, and within those programs, they have different guidelines and things. We have some programs that are more intensive for children who um, need a little bit more structure and uh, to learn some life skills and build some of those skills before they can become a little bit more independent. Um, one of our more exciting programs is um, the Transitional Living Program. It's really um, a neat program because while we serve children from 10 to 21, um, once they reach about 16, they really become more independent. And that's when we can really help them to prepare for, you know, the years ahead um, after they are 21 and they do leave Bethany. We like to make sure that they're fully prepared um, with skills as far as money management and we help them to get their driver's license and they all get either a GED or their um, high school diploma. And many of them go on to either college or a trade school or they do have a full-time job by the time they leave us um, like i said we do have have them um, get their driver's license if they wish to have it and we also help them to find housing um, after they do leave us um, currently like i said we can only house them until the age of 21 but we are hoping that legislation is going to push that to 23 so we have a little bit more time with them and allow them to to grow and to learn before um, they go out into the big world out there so uh, we are thrilled to be able to do that for them um, for our younger children they all do go to school they don't you typically go to school on campus. They go to Conrad Weiser um, School District, which is our 
neighborhood school. Um, some of them do have alternative education if they do happen to need a little bit more structure than that, but most of them do go to Conrad Weiser. We do try to have them um, participate in many community activities. A lot of them are in sports and drama clubs and things like that. So, you know, we just want them to have a childhood like so many of us were privileged to have um, that thus far they haven't really been able to enjoy. Um, just some quick updates. We have about 55 youth right now in our Cottage Life program. We also have a Helping Hands program, which is um, children who come to us from uh, across the, the Mexican border. Um, we do know that that can be a controversial pr program, but Bethany Children's Home's mission is to care for all children. And we want to make sure that they have the best possible start that they can. So while they're with us, they're, they can only be with us for up to 30 to 45 days. What we're doing is we're working in the background to find them a sponsor in um, the United States or a family member. And we kind of vet those family members to make sure that they're a suitable um, home for them to move into. So we're really there getting them all their vaccinations and um, making sure that they're, they're nice and healthy and taken care of until we do find that permanent um, setting for them. Um, and the one thing that I did want to mention uh, that Jody had mentioned briefly was uh, we did begin our um, mission in 1863. So 2023 is our 160th anniversary. So we are incredibly excited and blessed um, to be able to serve the community for that many years. So we will be having a lot of exciting events coming up. Um, so stay tuned. I will send some information along to Jody if she would like to pass it along. Um, we're going to have a lot of um, events on campus to allow people to come and, and see what we do firsthand. So. Uh, thank you so much for letting me speak here today and have a blessed holiday season. Thank you, Dana, very much. So now we enter into our time of the celebration of lessons and carols. And as we do so, I start with our time of a bidding prayer. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season with joy, let us hear once more the message of the angels and in heart and mind, go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion to the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. First, let us pause in prayer. Lord God, we offer prayers before you for the needs of the whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which the Christ child grew to die. Lord God, we remember and lift up before you in Christ's name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, all who are sick and who mourn among us, those who are currently struggling with wellness issues. We pray especially today for Roland and for Sue and for Donald. We pray for the lonely and the unloved, the aged, and the little children, especially those children of whatever range of age they are at Bethany. We pray as well for those who do not know and love our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord God, we remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in the Lord Jesus, we are one forevermore. And now to sum up all these petitions, hear us as we pray in the words which Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May God bless us. May Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. May the King of angels bring us all to join the fellowship of the saints who have gone before us. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? 
He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you've given to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord called to Abram a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves. 
because you have obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God.
A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. 
He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Thanks be to God.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went, and with great haste found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born at Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe this star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, 
frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people, did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Let's rise for our final hymn.
O God, who makes us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Before I give the benediction, I would like to thank our choirs and Philip and all of you for singing and making this a truly meaningful and joyful service together as we continue through this Advent season. And I invite you all to share your gratitude and appreciation to everyone who was up here today. So, <laughs> wonderful job. So now may he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated. Betty.